It is cutoff day here at Bristol Motor Speedway as the National Sim Racing League welcome you to round number 29 and the cutoff race in the round of 16. It's Bristol, baby, and it's the Thunder Valley 300. Good evening, friends. Marty Sakala with you on the call as always, and welcome to the last great Coliseum. Drivers duking at it today around the short track oval. Some spots are already locked in, but there is a lot that we are still waiting on. We've got a car count of just about 19 drivers ready to take the green flag here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Under three minutes left here in qualifying, and it's currently Landon Lacey on the top of the charts with a 14.63. If you missed us last week, we had a great one for you at the Richmond Raceway, taking home the win, of course, we mentioned it earlier, it was Landon Lacey. And of the 250 laps we had, he led 249. Aiden Bearline only led one lap in that race. But it was an absolutely phenomenal performance by Landon Lacey to pick up another win this season. It was only a one caution flag, or excuse me, five cautions in the race with the race lasting an hour and 48 minutes. So only two yellows. It's going to be three yellows outside of the stage ends. We'll watch another driver here on track at the moment. Tom Perra will go on board with him on our gyro camera. So you get a sense of what it's like on the 30-degree bank in a Bristol. Of course, Para not one of, usually one of the fastest here in the National Sim Racing League, but a nice sense of what it is like around Bristol. As we're getting ready to take the green flag here, let's talk about the cutoff situations here. At the moment, we're giving 12 people in the playoffs. We know one driver that's locked in, and that is Josh Susie. As you look at everyone else in the field, Mark Sikosi has just over just about an 80-point lead, so he is locked in. Briggs Swope likely going to be locked in as well. He is locked in. Same with Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, and I believe Dylan Clark and Alan Crow. Here's how it also looks throughout the day today. Jimmy Barr and Brian Preslar up 20, up 16. That is Justin Diltz. Up 11 is Josh Aaron. Excuse me, he's up 9 points. And then a tie for 12th between Tom Para and Brian Wiggins. No Ryan Broderick is in the field, no Kyle Milliken, and no Daniel Menzies. So of the drivers that are in the playoffs, one driver will be going home. And it will either be Tom Perra or Brian Wiggins, or it will be somebody else, like maybe Josh Aaron potentially, if he has a rough day, and Perra and Wiggins have an incredible day. So we'll just see what happens. Kayla McCarthy clocks in. At 5th quick at a 14.87. And with that being said, of the 14 drivers that take time, Landon Lacey is the quickest at the moment. And we'll watch Mark Sikosi for right now. And I think he'll call it right here, as I believe we will see the checkers here momentarily in qualifying. Give you our race analysis here at the moment. We're going around for 300 miles of the Bristol Motor Speedway. Stages will end at laps 85, 170, and 300 on the half mile oval. 30 degrees of banking in the turns. It's always a fun one here when you race in Bristol at any car, no matter what it is. Track seats 162,006 tire sets and is always a sight for sore eyes when you walk in through the gates entering the gate Entering the bowl of Bristol Motor Speedway. It's absolutely breathtaking. I've been there three times. Hopefully I'll be there a fourth time this year. Who knows what will happen. But it's absolutely incredible. Mark Sikosi going fourth, going third quick here. So we're in our final minute of qualifying before we take the green flag. Josh Susi timing in at eighth quick. Let's go to Susie here on the number 91. And this looks close. It'll be a slower lap by two hundredths of a second. So that will likely do it here for qualifying is 
We'll have 18 drivers that will be taking the green flag here around Thunder Valley. And with that being said, Landon Lacey and Briggs Swope will make up the front row. Swope is the highest of the playoff drivers. Swope locked in to the round of 12. So, of course, we'll just have to see what goes down. If you're at least 40 points above the cut line, you are locked in. So five drivers officially are currently locked in. Could be six after a stage and could be seven after two stages. With that being said, here's the starting lineup. It's Landon Lacey and Briggs Swope that make up the front row in the number 11 and the number 7. Lacey with the time of 14, 6.35. Row number two, you'll find Mark Sikosi in the 91, Justin Dill to the 19, teammates. Row number three, Tyler Isley in the 17, and Kayla McCarthy in car number 24. Row four, David Smeal Jr. in the 29, and Josh Soucy in the 12. Rounding out the top 10, Steve Stripmatter in the 51, and Alan Crowell in the 9. In row number six, that is where you'll find Robbie Bice in the 28. Welcome him back to the series. And Dylan Clark. Driving car number 34. In row 7 is Brian Preslar in car number 67. And Tom Para in the 16. In row 8, Don DeGroote in the number 20. Jimmy Barr in the number 6. And starting on the inside line in the final few spots, Stan Mayberry in the number 99. And Alex Robinson will start from the rear in the number 23. Well, you know what it's like to race around Bristol. We told you about the track analysis, so here is how it looks. 300 laps, the weather report, 81 degrees is the track temp set for March 2nd, our first race in March of the year, obviously. And the time is currently set just before 6 p.m., so it should be expected for us to end under the lights here at Thunder Valley. Listen in some radio chatter at the moment before we take the green flag. We've got all the chat radio communications hooked up for you tonight, especially with it being not just a cutoff race, but because it is Bristol Motor Speedway, one of the most demanding short tracks and can really get minds off their pace. Two pace laps here around Bristol before we take the green flag as you see the view from the press box from the commentary tower. There is never a bad seat whenever you're at Bristol Motor Speedway, no matter what. The straightaways, like the back straightaway where I sit a lot, probably the best view. Landon Lacey on pole in the number 53, led all but one lap last week at Bristol. Has a win, that has... Need, needs one win, and he'll tie Ashton Crowder for the most wins this Last season. Would have been a good week to do the uh, four breath salute. One lap until we get the green flag. It's going to be a good one here at Bristol Motor Speedway. 12 go into the next round. Four will go home. One of those drivers is in the field. The other three are not. We'll see what happens here at the last great Coliseum. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? There's just three words left to say. This is Bristol. Here we go, folks, around the last great Coliseum. It is showtime in Thunder Valley. Landon Lacey with an incredible start over Brick Swope, Mark Sikosi, Tyler Isley, and Justin Diltz going side by side for P4 on the track as they're all trading positions all the way around. High side, the third line at the moment. There's not really a bad line here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Diltz should clear Isley though off at turn four and he does to take away P4. Wait till you see the bank in here 
in three and four if we have this nice shot. Look at that. 30 degrees of bacon. I've gotten a chance to go on a track walk here back in the first time when it was covered in the dirt. And when you walk up that banking, I know it's the lower banking on the dirt, like I think 26 degrees. When you go on that banking, though, it is steep and always a tough task to climb up it. Teammates going at it for P7. Josh Susie and Kayla McCarthy all locked into the next round, and Susie takes away seventh. Susie also won Winwood tie with Ashton Crowder for the most wins on the season. To the back of the field here is Alan Crow, Robbie Bice side by side. The P9 on the track. We got one we just heard scrape the wall, but it looks like we are good to go. And staying under the green flag, Steve Strip Matter, non playoff driver in the chrome number 51. Looking to make some moves, and we got a driver in the pits already, and that is Alex Robinson. I'm not sure if he was the one. Oh, he did tag the wall. Right front damage, and I think he will park it for the evening. Seven laps currently in the books. It's Landon Lacey that continues to lead at the moment. That's Brian Preslar's on board. Why don't you see what it's like from the gyro, from the gyro cam. There is never a flat part here at Bristol Motor Speedway unless you're in the pits. Should see these drivers do about three to four stops. The drivers all have six tires sets for tonight in case they do need to change tires. Change by the way for the fourth position is Tyler Isley. Justin Diltz continuing to do battle here. And you get a little bit loose there. Caught, caught up Josh Susie there. A couple of other drivers are in the pits. Robbie Bice in pit road. And you can see he's got some right side damage. Tried to listen into his audio. Pop it in too late. Kill a coffee, uh, Chris. Sounds like he's talking. Sounds like he was trying to say something there for just a moment. Yeah, I got you. Hey, right, Saga Ray Control will keep that muted. Robinson said, I bet I'd be top 10 if we put the dirt on here and run some late models. <laughs> next year, next year on the schedule, they'll be racing on the dirt. Alex, don't you worry. But it's with cup cars and not late models. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to do that to you, but that won't be happening. Short tracks are a waste. Oh, come on, man. Don't be a downer. Short track racing is grassroots racing. Don't matter. Technically, dirt racing is short track racing. Whether it be on, whether it be super late models on at Five Flags or late models at Fallujah, that is all short track racing. I don't care what you say. It's all of the above. It's the same damn thing. <laughs> David Smeal, Josh Susie going out for fifth position. Oh, damn, Lynn just came in with the kill. Just came in with a waste asterisk. By the way, big hello to Chris Lynn, working air traffic control. We got a battle for seventh happening here between Briggs Swope and Mark Sakosi. Alex wants Super Speedway. Hey, if we could have a Super Speedway series, I would love it. Because <laughs> I love Super Speedway racing. But oh well. We've got reports, by the way, that Tom Para just crashed. I don't know if he spun coming into pit roll. Let's take a look here. Ah, came right in front of the nose of Robbie Bice, and what a save by Para. Could that be a click click Kodak moment? Then he turns it into the inside wall. So Perez chances, by the way, he's one of the drivers below the cut line. Came in tied against Brian Wiggins. Brian Wiggins, by the way, not in the field for those wondering as well. So this is looking good for Tom Perez. Tom Perez will be in the next round. Wiggins, Broderick, Milliken, and Menzies are not in the field tonight. 
And I don't even see Josh Aaron in the field either, so. Josh Aaron coming up with a lucky wishbone for sure. It's an update on the playoff contenders. Again, all the playoff contenders on your, that you see on the leaderboard, they are all identified in yellow next week. That number will greatly decrease, that's for sure. Good battle happening here on track. That's for P9 between Alan Crowell and Steve Stripmatter. Stripmatter currently about four tenths of a second off the pace, currently with the final bonus point at the moment. Stage one, by the way, lasting 85 laps here. Until then, we'll throw out a caution flag after lap 85. Here's a battle here for second. We we're watching this earlier. Rick Swope, Mark Sikosi, Tyler Isley, and Josh Susi. Right on board here with the current points leader. Locked himself into the round of 12 after the win at Darlington. So watch this battle. This is not really a bad setup whenever you work from the baseline of the Bristol setup. It's really good. Any setup really pretty much works. He'll be fast no matter what. It's just all a matter of consistency. As you see there, Sakosi takes away second spot, and now Briggs will be facing the big pressure from the number 12, and Susi gets the clear off of Swope, but now Isley looking for fourth. I didn't even realize this, by the way. Landon Lacey with a 7.6 second lead over Mark Sakosi. I think we should just put the checkered flag out already and just say Landon Lacey is the winner. Josh Aaron couldn't make tonight, so he caught a DraftKings break. <laughs> yeah, he got lucky for sure. Maybe he could go bet on DraftKings Sportsbook. On board, Mark Sikosi, and he's fallen back to fourth position, currently in the no man's land, as Susie and Isley were able to make a pass for P2. Already up to eight seconds. In fact, why don't we compare the lap times they are running? Look how faster that is compared to Susie and Isley. We're about to the race leader here. Look at that. A couple laps ago was running three tenths of a second faster compared to our second place driver. My goodness, we could be in a situation where we see Landon Lacey lap the entire field. This time I think he helped delay Susie a little bit. Gave up some ground, was three tenths slower compared to Josh Susie. Working on Don DeGroote, currently in the 14th spot. These lap times go off quickly. I like to compare Bristol Motor Speedway like you were racing around a toilet bowl. Swishing all the way around, and then the only way you go down is when you crash. It's a crazy short track for sure. Short track unlike any other. 36 laps currently in the books. 10 drivers are on the lead lap. It's your best battle on track for P3. Two drivers, by the way, in the playoffs. Looking to get some extra bonus points. By the way, the points will reset after this round based off the playoff points. And of course, we know who's got the most of all drivers this season in the playoffs, and that is Josh Susi. Here's the run for third spot. Let's see if Sikosi can get a run on Isley. High sides Isley, that's the preferred line, especially on the exits, but Sikosi gets a nice run down low. Bristol Motor Speedway used to be a track where there was only one groove, and that was the low line. If you went anywhere up high, you were pretty much in big trouble. It was really all about driving the race car and trying to keep it rocking on the low groove. However, though, back in 2007, 2008 or so, there was a big repay. The banking got increased big time, and it led to the high side being the way you wanted to go. And then there was another reconfiguration. I think this was in 2012, 2013 or so, where the banking was just a little bit lower to what it is today giving both lines kind of a chance. And in these current days, they're putting down uh, resin 
to help out that low line, give some multiple grooves around Bristol Motor Speedway. I mean, I'm not a fan of PJ Warner Resin, but that has kind of helped out a little bit. I'm not a big fan of it, though. However, though, it does provide the multiple groove racing. Let's go to a battle here for seventh on track. Greg Swope and Justin Diltz. Diltz looking pretty lucky. Came in 16 points above the cutoff and will make it into the round of 12. Alan Crowell also a part of this battle too. So a three-way battle happening for seventh at the moment. All drivers currently a lap down. Keelan McCarthy currently the last car on the lead lap. So it is the Landon Lacey show at the moment. Taking off laps as we speak with a six and a half second lead on Josh Susie. Six drivers on the lead lap. We'll go side by side for the first time tonight here at Bristol. Back here at Bristol Motor Speedway, you are watching live coverage of the Thunder Valley 300. We've got just about 30 laps left here in our opening stage. Landon Lacey currently the race leader. And at the moment, I believe there are only five drivers on the lead lap, and that's the top five on your screen. A look from our aerial shot. Well, you saw it for a moment on the back straightaway. You're looking at Alan Crowell, who's currently in that battle for eighth place against Briggs Wolpe and Steve Stripmatter. Dylan Clark also being a part of this battle too. I tell you something, it has been a rough night so far for Dylan Clark. This is a man that prefers road courses for sure. He is not a big short track guy like Alex Robinson is, but he knows how to race on intermediate, so maybe we could see him do good coming up in the round of 12 when we have races take place at Las Vegas and also Talladega, and then the Charlotte Roval. So watch Clark to be a threat here closely. But Dylan at the moment, currently in 11th position. Clark's got to run the outside on strip mark matter here. Let's see if he can take away P10. And the answer is yes. That's P11. Yes, it is for P10. So currently Dylan Clark with the final stage point at the moment. Right on board from the rear end of that number 34 machine. And I think we just had a glitch there for just a moment. Let's go and watch the Briggs Hope Allen Crowell showdown happening for eighth position at the moment. So 
Clark's got to run to the inside. He may have been one that's deciding, you know what, I'm going to save my tires on the first half of the stage. And then the second half, it is go time for me. So to the inside he goes. And ninth spot belongs to Dylan Clark. Of course, Dylan Clark winning earlier this season that taking place at Road America. Started on the front row and was able to take the win. It's part of that streak where we saw the string of first time winners. David Salter also a part of that string that took place at Iowa. Landon Lacey too got his first win at that time as well. Biggest mover so far in this race, Josh Susi starting from eighth up to second. Dylan Clark up four spots to eighth, and then Stan Mayberry up four spots to 13th. Biggest loser so far is Briggs Wolf, who has dropped all the way down to the ninth position on the track. You can see how close a quarter of a second here is at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's a very big gap bigger gap than normal so they put another lap on Stan Mayberry the gap by the way for Landon Lacey currently leading is 7.9 seconds on Josh Susi. that gap has been a little bit consistent ever since Susi took away the second spot as he put David David Smeal a lap down as Smeal's talking on the radio as the communication there for just a moment. One of the longest runs we have had to start the season. It would be very impressive if we get a caution-free stage one, which is very rare in the National Sim Racing League, and especially, too, at a short track like Bristol Motor Speedway. Again, earlier to start the season, we saw a lot of impatient drivers. Like, for example, if you go back to the second race of the season, that took place at Lucas Oil Raceway. We had, I'll get it for you here. Give me just a moment. We had 21 cautions that evening. It's getting close here for Tyler Isley. Bally marks the Kosey for fourth position as they're in a flurry of lap traffic along with Landon Lacey in this too. And Isley nearly got into the leader. This is getting this is getting pretty crazy for Lacey. Oh, he may split them. Oh my, that got crazy. Steve Strip Matter, I don't know how he did not get the wall. That's insane. Isley probably not happy about that move that his former teammate put on him. Lacey starts to pull away from that lap traffic. Only three cars now on the lead lap because of it. And that is that are his teammates, Josh Susi and Kayla McCarthy. Let's go back and watch the Isley Sakosi showdown. They've been they were right up front earlier. I think Isley's been the more consistent one inside the top five, but Sakosi was running inside the top three in the first half of this stage and has been falling back. So ten laps to go in stage number one. Another battle here. Take a look at seventh spot on the line between Justin Diltz and Dylan Clark. About a half a car length separating them. Bad corner for Diltz. Remember, Clark's been on the rise ever since. He's been ever since he was in the back in the first half of stage one. So Clark gets that to work thanks to the low line. Dilt's trying to fight back though. This is a good battle here. Nearly gained together by the way off turn two. That got oh, clo oh so close. A 
Five laps to go for Landon Lacey, who's increased the lead to just about 10 seconds. This is going to be a yellow that Josh Susi and Kayla McCarthy will love to see. There's Kayla right there, so that could be crucial to Tyler Isley and Mark Sikosi because for right now they're battling for a lucky dog spot separated by a half second. Yeah. What, what stage is what? What lap is taking? Just doing some race control discussions. There's ends at lap 85 in stage one. So we'll see here if Landon Lacey puts a lap on Kayla McCarthy. If she doesn't, that'll help out Tyler Isley and leave four drivers on the lead lap. Pits are closed here in stage number one. Right now it's Alan Crowell that will receive the final stage point three seconds ahead of Steve Stripmatter. Final lap in the stage for Landon Lacey. Another stage win for the driver of the 53 Martin Sports KTS machine. And a 10 second margin of victory in stage number one. So Lacey gets that done as the first yellow of the race comes on out. Landon Lacey, your stage winner. And we will step aside here. Pit stops coming up in just a moment here at Bristol. Stay with us. Drivers should be catching the pace car momentarily, and here we go for pit stops. So now this is where it gets really interesting in terms of pit road. And that may be a penalty to Josh Susi and maybe Kayla McCarthy because the rules here in pitting at Bristol Motor Speedway, they are completely different compared to green flag stops. This will be a penalty against Susi and McCarthy. Here's what the rules say. You have to enter pit road coming off, coming at turn two and exit at turn number one. So it doesn't matter. Everyone's pit stalls are on the front straightaway, but it doesn't matter in the iRacing book. Unless Chris Lynn's decided to be nice and just say, hey, you know what, why not? You guys can all come in on the front straightaway. And I think that's what he's doing with everyone, so think that is the case. Chris will confirm that with me, but everyone is on in. And so this should give the lead afterwards to Josh Susi and Kayla McCarthy. And with that, all the drivers' black flags should be cleared because of what is happening. But, you know, this could be some confusion, and Lacey is away. This could lead to some confusion on the heads-up displays if black flags are not cleared and it states everyone has to go to the rear of the field. So I don't think they'll do that. So, Josh Susi, Kayla McCarthy, Landon Lacey, Tyler Isley will be on the lay lap when we come back to green. Stay with us here at Bristol, baby. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling.
Just got back to the green flag. Stage number two is underway, and it is Josh Susi currently out front on Landon Lacey. Kayla McCarthy, but look at Lacey on the charge already. Up to second. Going by Kayla McCarthy there for the spot. And there he goes down to the inside looking for the race lead. And Lacey should get the pass done in turn number two. And the answer is yes. New leader Landon Lacey out in front. Wanted to have somebody else lead like Josh Susi. I think that was the game plan. Would not be surprised though if at the end of stage two Landon Lacey said, you know what, I want a potty break. <laughs> They decide to, you know, start from there and make its way up to the field. Let's go to the back of the pack, though. Steve Stripmatter, Brian Preslar, as well as Alan Crowell, they are all in a battle for 10th. 11th if you count Crowell out. Right on board here with Preslar on the gyro cam. Law currently in 12th position. Started from 13th. That stage, by the way, probably, oh, uh, we got trouble. Stan Mayberry has crashed it from 13th spot. And caution, flag is out. I'm glad I didn't say it because I was about to say stage one was the cleanest stage. Put off the track. We had ever seen. And so Mark Sikosi will receive the free pass here. So without being said, let's take a look at the replay and show you what happened with the 99 car. It was too much right foot and then he just tried to save it. That should have been a yellow flag right there. He backs it down so we are good. And then, ah, so here is what it is. So we're good, we're good, we're good, but he stopped on the track. And race control with no choice but to throw the yellow flag out. Hey Chris, when the time comes on the restart, I'm gonna take you outside. So Mark Sikosi gets back on the lead lap, and we'll start at the rear of the field. While we're at it, let's listen to some driver chatter. This yellow, by the way, real quick, helps out Tyler Isley. He'll be up on the front two rows when we come back to green. I think they put PJ1 on the bottom. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly? I'm where I'm at. I just need one more quick caution to get my weight back. Peanut butter jelly sauce. You'll be in front of me. No, it's Krispy Kreme donut time. So ready to go back the green flag. Nope, we got two laps until we get the green flag, so stand by for that. I'm hoping I can get a good restart like last time. I didn't jump up behind you because Caleb stalled me out on the top for three laps. So you take top. Um, so here we go as we get ready up. for this restart. It is Landon Lacey, 
Josh Susi the front row. Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy in row two. Then Mark Sikosi restarting from the rear in fifth. Briggs Wolf is sixth. David Smeal Jr. seventh. Dylan Clark eighth. And Justin Deltz ninth. Alan Crowell rounding out the top ten. Here we go to get back to green for this restart. High side gets a great jump. Isley up to second, maybe the highest he's been in this entire day. Susia run down on the bottom. Bice on the radio. Never mind, that was a quick one. Great battle on your screen happening right there. Let's see if Susie can clear. Oh, man, I think Isley got off the gas for just a moment. That got really close. Briggs Wope also a part of this battle. I wouldn't be a fine hand because currently he is the free pass car at the moment. We're seeing a nice battle happening for 10th while we're at it. Alan Crowell around the outside on Brian Preslar. I think Preslar was actually challenging earlier on. It doesn't work. Steve Strip Manor now looking around the outside for 11th. Oh, man, Dylan Clark got loose, almost caught the wall. That got oh so close, and ironically, Clark Savage coming in with a funny emoji there. Landon Lacey, by the way, just ran the quickest lap of the event at a 14.58. That's one second lead on Tyler Isley, but this battle is getting wild. Dylan Clark also a part of a battle with Justin Dell. So there's two different battles happening here. First, you've got a battle with Preslar and Strid Matter happening on track. That is for 11th. And then Crow and Jotes battling for 9th all the way around. We got one driver in the pits, and I think that was Bice serving a pass-through penalty. Nope, he has entered the pit lane. I don't know what happened here. But Bice's car is currently in tow, so let's go to a replay and see what Oh, he lost it. He lost it into the inside wall. We'll have to rewind the footage and show you what happened. That's interesting. Let's ride on board here with Robbie. Oh, the rear end just got light off of four. I don't even think he was steering the car as all, just trying to protect it. Landon Lacey, meanwhile, back up front. Three-second lead on Tyler Isley. Continue on here with a battle for eight. Dylan Clark, Justin Deltz, here we go. Nice corners from Dylan Clark, just holding his line on the outside and clearing on Justin Dilt. Dilt's trying to fight it back, meanwhile. It's been an interesting question, by the way. You see Justin Dilt's doing fourth gear. Let's go around the field and see if anyone's doing fifth gear or whatnot. So we know the top three are doing five gears. Top four are doing five gears. So Kosi, the first one running in fourth. Justin Diltz running in fourth gear. Same with Alan Crowell. That's how it's pretty much looking at the moment. You gotta be really careful if you're a guy like Mark Sikosi and you're running in the fourth gear. Let's show you the dashboard and see how he's... You gotta be very careful running in fourth gear because the lower the gear you go, the, the the easier it is to get the rear end light on your car. So say like, for example, the easier it is, I should say, to get a bunch of wheel spin on your car. So for example, let's say you're downshifting and you go down from second to first. The engine revs get high, there's a lot of wheel spin, and it's easy for that back end to come around. So just a little something you want to keep in mind, by the way. Let's go to one of our best battles on track. Actually, I don't know if you can really call it a battle just yet. It's Briggs Swope and David Smeal in the running for a position. As you see, Tom Para lets the field go by. Para, by the way, with no front bumper at all. He was involved in a wreck earlier on. Didn't bring out a yellow, but was pretty much 
Iraq. Next week, by the way, for the National Sim Racing League, the round of 12 begins at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The Las Vegas 300 will be 200 circuits around Las Vegas, so don't miss that. Start time, 8.45 p.m. on twitch.tv slash National Sim Racing and on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page, excuse me, twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. What are we thinking here these days? It's near the end of the season. I'm pretty much through with that already. <laughs> so the Dylan Clark, Justin Dote show still continuing for eighth position. We have uh, we went on board with the roll bar, the gyro. Why don't we ride on board from a nose camera? Here's what it's like around Bristol. I love the short track cams. That is off of Justin Deltz, currently running in ninth position. We're trying to run that outside for right now. We've actually got a good battle starting to develop for second spot. Tyler Isley and Josh Susi. Susi, nice run for him so far tonight. Biggest mover of this race. Started in the eighth position. He has made his way all the way up into P2. Back a half second. Let's go to over here for six. Briggs Swope and David Smeal. And this is the battle for what could be the lucky dog if we do get a yellow flag before Mark Sakosi goes a lap down or anyone in front. Smeal tried to run it like a dirt car around the extreme high side, around the cushion. Trying to use that 30 degrees of banking as momentum gets some bite as Swope slams the door off the corner. Ooh, almost had the exit. Swope nearly pinched him up and into the wall, and I think Swope's letting Smeal go by, and here nearly clips the wall in the center of the corner. So David Smeal moves his way up into P6 on track. So he's currently the first car a lap down, could get the free pass. Let's show you where your favorite drivers are on your screen. Look for the 11 of Landon Lacey. There he is, and you see Mark Sakosi just entering turn three. Justin Dilt starting to lose just a little bit of time to Dylan Clark. Better corner, though, by the driver for 19. You got to make the big key here when you race around Bristol, whatever groove you enter to, you have to commit with it. If you change any part of it, it could mess you up, whether you go low to high, meaning you could be really tight, or going high to low, which could lead to the rear end getting really loose. So we'll just have to see what happens in that regard. Hundred thirty-five laps are complete. It is Landon Lacey, Josh Susi, Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy, and Mark Sakosi. Your top five all on the lead lap. We'll step aside here and go side by side once again here at Bristol.
Just approaching 25 laps to go here at the Bristol Motor Speedway. A look at Kayla McCarthy currently running in position number four. One of the few drivers remaining on the lead lap. He's getting a good look on board with her. In fact, at the moment, why don't we take a look? In fact, at the moment, why don't we go ahead and take a look and give you a full field rundown around Bristol Motor Speedway. So Landon Lacey currently the race leader. He's led the most laps today and pretty much a couple laps from now he will clinch the most laps led. Josh Susie currently running in second. Tyler Isley, he is third. Kayla McCarthy running in fourth. Mark Sikosi in fifth. Those are the only cars on the lead lap. David Smeal, the first driver. A lap down in sixth. Briggs Swope is currently seventh. Dylan Clark is eighth. Only cars a lap down. Justin Diltz, two laps down in ninth position. Alan Crowell is 10th, three laps down, along with Steve Stripmatter running in 11th. Brian Preslar, four laps down in 12th position. And we have four drivers currently out of the race. Those are Stan Mayberry, Robbie Bice, Jimmy Barr, and Alex Robinson. Tom Para is on track, currently running in the 15th position. Looked like a good chance to go up a couple of spots and finish in 13th place. Don DeGroote currently in the pits in 16th. He's pretty much called it a day and decided to stick around and watch the action. Good battle here starting to develop shortly for 6th on track. That's between David Smeal and Briggs Swope. Blue car in front of the Corey LaJoy number 7 machine. Briggs Swope started in 2nd. Lowest spot I believe he's been today is ninth, but a nice day for him so far, currently in P7. While we are out of here, folks, and you can hear we've got a lack of commentary at the moment, so we'll take this opportunity. Crank it up for you around Bristol. That shows you why we, why we love the nose cam here at Bristol Motor Speedway, baby. Ten laps to go here in stage number two. Landon Lacey out front. Watching a good battle here happening for sixth position. Another battle happening, and that's going on for third spot. Tyler Isley and Kayla McCarthy duking at it there. I can tell you, by the way, Mark Sikosi has gone a lap down. That would put him on the free pass at the end of the stage. It is not what David Smeal wants to see in the 29. In fact, he's a couple moments away from going two laps down, which would be even worse. Stage two ending at lap 170 for this man, Landon Lacey, currently out in front by just five seconds. Right now on your screen, though, you are watching the battle for P3 taking place. These guys got to be careful if they keep on battling, losing momentum. Landon Lacey could put one of those two a lap down and would mess up 
Mark Sikosi's plan. McCarthy trying to get a run on the inside here. Again, all about holding the line. That could help out for all. Oh, Isley got loose off the corner. That'll help out Kayla for sure. Be five laps to go in stage number two, and McCarthy oh. makes the pass stick for P3, and McCarthy appreciates the hard racing. Let's see here if Isley can fight it back. He'll need some fresh tires for sure very shortly. In top three currently, all KTS with Lacey, Susie, and McCarthy. Dylan Clark currently in eighth position. Who could maybe possibly have a chance to go one, two, three, four, but it's going to be a really rough task to do that. Need a really long green flag run if he, needs, if he gets a chance to do that. But these laps tick away very quickly. We are just past the halfway point here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Landon Lacey has clinched. The most laps led in this race today. Second straight week, I believe, he has done that. Maybe third straight. Nope, second straight week. I don't think he was in the race we had at Darlington, and he was not. Now we'll see here if he decides to take a little bit of a potty break here. After the stages, you see that, oh, very rare moment for Lacey. He clipped the wall, just trying to show off to the fans. Dylan Clark, by the way, closing in on Briggs, Swope, and David Smeal Jr. They will have to wait. Will definitely help out Briggs, Swope, but I don't think it will help out David Smeal at all. Lacey sees the green white checkered flag. He has won stage number two. Go to break and step aside. Pit stops around the corner. Stay with us. Pit stops underway. You watch the leader, Landon Lacey, make his stop. Probably the penultimate stop of the race for him. Actually could be possibly the final stop. We'll take a look at the stints when we begin stage number three. And this is an extended break for him. I think he's deciding, you know what, I'm going to take a potty break. He may be hearing me on the broadcast. So Kayla McCarthy is the race leader. I think, you know what, I think he's waiting for everyone else to come on in. So Lacey will restart as the leader. I'll just have a lap of worn tires. Susie. Don't do that. And Susie, I believe, it will restart as the leader with Landon Lacey next to him. Briggs Swope, I think, staying out an additional lap. So with that being said, Landon Lacey, Josh Susi make up the front row when we come back to the green flag as drivers start to flee out of pit road. Stay with us here at Bristol. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. I got 
pretty good middle of the long, but he just killed me on the short. Just in time to get back to green for this restart. It is Landon Lacey, Josh Susie, Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy, and Mark Sikosi on the lead lap as we are ready to get back under the green flag. Just under 125 laps to go at Bristol Motor Speedway. One caution so far outside of the stage, yellows, and we are ready. Susie brings them back to green as Lacey is caught sleeping, allows McCarthy to hold on to P2. Bad exit for McCarthy, opening up the door. Susie takes away second. McCarthy okay. could lose third. So Isley is up to the position. Here comes Dylan Clark looking to have some fun. Four of the KTS drivers are up there. Remember Dylan Clark currently in P8 come. though. But here we go. <laughs> At this point, they're just having fun at the moment. I think they pretty much have a win wrapped up with Landon Lacey. But you just never know because it's Bristol, baby. Right now. It's Tyler Isley currently in third, starting to close in on Susie in the battle for B2. Let's see what happens. Tenths of a second separated each other. Oh, trouble! And is it for Tom Perra? Let's go! And this will put David Smeal back on the lead lap. A yellow that he definitely needed. Brother, I'm gonna keep doing what I've been doing already. Don't worry about me. And I'm locked in top six right now. I'm not mad about it. That's fair. That's all I get. Let's take a look and see what happened while drivers and commuter came with each other. Not, not helping you out the whole field. Oh, that was odd. It seemed like Justin Dill nope, he was not chasing down someone. It's the guy in front. Was that strip matter? It was that got sideways. Gets the wall, Dilt's got loose and plows into him. That caused him to get loose and the caution flies. What in the world? That was extremely strange. Alrighty. So after all of that, we will keep it here with you. As we got many drivers in the pits. Stage one. Using an insurance set at the moment. This could be drivers' final stop of the race. And you know what? We should actually talk about that at the moment. Of the top ten, here is how a stint looked. Just about 90 laps on average. So we are currently with 115 laps to go. Would it be enough to take them to the end? It... I think it could, but we'll just have to wait and see. Chris, I'm going to take the outside on the reset. No! Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I'm going to take the inside. No, 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 no. I'm telling your girlfriend. Oh, boy. It's getting good. Go ahead. Wait, girlfriend. Uh -oh. I just told her, and she said, deal with it. God damn it. <laughs> we don't care about no, the I language. Point, we apologize right. for it, but we don't care. So, uh, when are you going to call me? She wants to poke your brown fish. You can poke my starfish anytime. Oh, gosh. She just asked a very open-ended question, saying, what do you want it to be? Your nickname, that is. <laughs> nickname, question mark? All right, so oh, we are going I green. We'll put this back on mute. 
And now we get ready for the restart. Landon Lacey, Josh Susie, row one. Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy in row two. Mark Sikosi, David Smeal in row three. They are all on the lead lap. You see David Smeal, though, having to restart from the rear because of being the lucky dog. Pace car is in. Lacey as the control car fires. We're back to green as Susie is caught sleeping. This should help out Tyler Isley get up into that second position. Mark Sikosi is up to fourth. McCarthy went really wide. Sikosi nearly thought about taking it three wide. That got a little bit too close for comfort. Sikosi trying around the outside and Isley and nips him at the line for third. Go for you. Oh, oh, that's Lacey! Lacey goes around and along with Brick Swope and Steve well, Strimmatter! Chris, apologies to Brick. I didn't check up in time. Oh no, what happened? Check up, check up for Brick. What in the world there. just happened? Sorry, I came over the mic. There it is. The leader! Did he just take himself out? Motherfucker, it looks like a snap, man. And this is a bizarre twist to the Thunder yeah, Valley 300. Let's take a look and see here. Oh, the car got so Oh, he just overcorrected it. Wow, my heart is just broken. You got to be kidding me. We do have a strange bunch, Chris. Too much right foot. A very rare mistake from Landon Lacey. You know, he led the most laps. And I said they were having fun that likely he could win it. But then I said, you never know. Because it's Bristol, baby. Let's watch the static shots here. Look at that. And give credit to everyone missing it. Briggs Swope, by the way, was that a situation where he came down into strip matter? Now you see Swope in the seven. I think this was a big checkup situation with Smeal got into Swope. And it was. So I believe that puts Swope back on the lead lap. Now the next question is, did anyone pit under that? And yes, David Smeal came in and Lacey is also in, obviously. Strip Matter Dilt's also in. So this gives the lead to Josh Susi. And this race... Just changed big time, so we will not have a driver that laps the entire field. So this will get interesting as we are just about ready to come back to green. The moment, my dad, I'm sorry. This is the moment where I was out of past repair, god damn it. So, back to the green. Josh Susi on the outside, Mark Sikosi next to him. Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, row two. David Smeal in the fifth position. So Briggs Swope got one of his laps back, I believe. And Susie fires. We're back to green. Front two got going. Sikosi caught sleeping. Of course, Susie relaying to his team members when he would fire. Sikosi puts the bumper on Kayla McCarthy. The Bristol bump and run for P2. Happening a little earlier than expected. As 11th place, Steve Strip Matter. Back in the pit road, trying to meet that minimum speed. Great battles happening all over. You see Tyler Isley, Kayla McCarthy going at it. Briggs Swope, by the way, for those wondering, still trying to get back on the lead lap. 
He would receive the free pass if he's able to. Couple drivers also coming in, by the way, too, for serving a penalty for meeting their minimum, for meeting minimum damage incident points. You don't want to be hitting 12x or else that gives you a penalty. Well, front those. We got the battle for the lead starting to shape up. Josh Susi, Mark Sakosi going at it. Have to see what happens here. 102 laps to go here at Bristol. Good battles all around. You got one for the lead. You got one for third on your screen. Nicely looking up on that outside on Kayla McCarthy. Here's a gyro shot. That's 30 degrees of banking for you folks at home. One plane, it's safe. Briggs Swope trying the bottom, but not really being a huge factor. Something I'm noticing as well, especially in three and four, because both turns are obviously different here. Actually, this is the same for all the turns. They are entering high and then exiting low just to get that big banking. Just diving in the corner, trying to use that downhill slope as momentum. And I think it's actually working with Marks Kosey. Trouble, Dylan Clark. I, I just crashed there for just a moment. Curly right in seventh spot. Is in a battle with Briggs Swope for that free pass position. Back to the battle for third. Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley going at it down the back chute. Car length and a half separating them. The rear end of Kayla 316. Kayla holding her line. That's a big gap show increase on Tyler Isley by just about six tenths of a second. Maybe even more. Chris Lynn picking Brick Swoop as he is a hero, that is for sure. I'm picking Landon Lacey to come all the way back and win this one, even despite being down 15 laps. Good battle happening, now to me no bad trouble. Steve Stripmatter is around. And he'll bring that one to the attention of his crew. That will likely be his race. Been a rough run for Stritty. Does he lose it off of two? He does. Oh, he first he, he tried to correct it and try and save it. But, you know, with the next-gen cars obviously being harder to drive, it is tough to save these cars. If you can save it, you're an absolute legend. Steve Stripmatter officially out of the race. Battle for the lead starting to shape up between Josh Susi and Mark Sakosi. He's right on board here with the driver of the number 91. Completely different lines. One likes it low, one likes it high. One driver likes the long runs. One driver will like a yellow to come out now. Why don't we compare the lap times between the top two and how you look. A little bit, I, nearly, uh, virtually identical at this point. One's either gaining, one's either losing, but it's just by a little bit. So we see starting to increase that lead for just a little bit. Just scrape the wall on the exit of two. That allows Sakosi to close in just a little bit. Let's go to the battle for third. McCarthy and Isley having a good battle, just reading each other, cat and nose. We are hearing from Chris Lynn, by the way, that Mark Sakosi may have slightly fresher tires by just a few laps. But who's better at saving tires? Of course, is Josh Seuss as they work on lap traffic. That's still to the 19, currently in 12th position. Of course, all the drivers in this field officially are in the next round. We talked about points coming on into the evening. 
The driver that came in 12th in points, Tom Parra pretty much breaking the tie on Brian Wiggins as he is not here. Ryan Broderick's not here, neither are Kyle Milliken or Daniel Menzies. Josh Aaron, 11th in points, is a lucky one as he did not make the race, but he is in the playoffs though, regardless in the round of 12. Tom Parra getting lucky as well, even being out of the race. So this leaves us with 12 drivers left on track. 217 laps are currently complete, and Josh Susi is the race leader here at Bristol Motor Speedway. We will step aside and go side by side. If trouble breaks out, we'll break in, so don't miss anything. Big battle happening closely for second place. You were watching it while we were side by side, and it could be starting to turn into one that's big, that's really changing everything. Mark Sakosi lost a little bit of time a couple moments ago to Josh Susi and allowed Kayla McCarthy to close in. Let's listen to Smeal. I know, but I'm trying to not take my fucking hand off. David Smeal talking with somebody. Not sure if it's with Isley or not, but here we go once again for P2. McCarthy trying it on the inside, coming to 71 to go. 91 with the advantage on the entry, who's got it on the exits. I think you're gonna wanna give this one to Kayla. Sikosi, I think, scraped the wall. Isley becoming a part of this battle as well for P2. Could maybe even add David Smeal to the equation. Briggs Swope will love to see a yellow flag come out soon. And the reason why is because Dylan Clark is closing in. Down to 1.2 seconds is the gap. And that's for a free pass position at the moment. Look at this incredible battle happening for P2. Bad corner there from Sikosi. Kayla on the clear takes away second spot. One car I think scraped the wall. May have been Smeal, not too sure. Here's where it looks from our drone shot. Is that Smeal that's still riding the wall? I'm not too sure, but somebody just keeps on scraping the wall. I'm not too sure who it is, though. McCarthy's put up a nice gap by Mark Sikosi. This could help out Isley. Look to the inside. Almost got it. So Kayla McCarthy starting to increase the gap. On Mark Sikosi. 
pair of the lap times from Sakosi to Isley. A couple laps ago, Isley was a tenth faster, which is a huge gap. This time, Isley, a couple hundred slower. They work on the lap car of Landon Lacey. Unfortunately, running in tenth position, will not win this race in a heartbreak. Will not tie Ashton Crowder on the, on the wins list this season. That could be done from Josh Susie with six wins this season. Battle for third, though, still on between Isley and Sakosi. Sakosi up there by just about a quarter panel. A tough line there from Isley. As here goes Landon Lacey, the much faster car, putting on the pressure big time. Look at those cars. They look virtually identical in paint schemes. And one of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> oh, man, what a corner. Bad exit by Sakosi. Isley says game, set, match. And that battle for third, so he'll pull away. Sakosi has lost his tires. Once again, he's, this happened to him a lot this season. We've seen a bunch of long runs, and it just affects Sakosi big time. And there you see Smeal go by for P4, but Sakosi, but Smeal just scraped the wall for just a moment. It's been rough on the long run game for Sakosi. Could have won Darlington, but needs to work on his long run management. Just been not been working out. We got another battle that. We've got another battle brewing here. The free pass battle. In case a caution comes out. Briggs Swope, Dylan Clark. Now if Clark gets back on the lead lap, guess what happens? Dylan Clark could lead to a 1, 2, 3, 4 finish for the KTS team. Inside move for Dylan Clark. Oh, they touch! That got close. Swope was not going to give it up at all. And Dylan Clark says thank you very much. He is up six positions to sixth position after a rough start. Top the two biggest movers, by the way, both out of the KTS camp. Josh Susi started eighth. He is currently in the race lead. David Smeal, by the way, bringing his car into pit road for the final stop of the race. Unless he has a problem. This could be an unscheduled stop with the 20. Oh. He got chopped off the corner. And we're going to watch that again. With David Smeal. Did, did Sakosi get into him? Was this it here? Yep, and that's a 4 ox. Brian Preslar was not moving whatsoever. And David Smeal gets relegated okay, nope. back to fifth, and he's not happy at all. Dylan Clark closing in. He made game. And he is not he letting game. Mark Sikosi have enough of it. Now, this is not what Clark or Swope wanted to see because at this point David so now David Smeal is currently the lap the first car a lap down not what Clark or Swope want it would be what Clark wants if he can get by David Smeal but if yellow comes out David That's Smeal David Smeal back on the lead lap so with under 50 laps to go, let's take this opportunity, give you a full field rundown. Josh Susie leads them. Kayla McCarthy currently second. Tyler Isley third. Mark Sikosi is fourth. David Smeal fifth. Dylan Clark running in sixth. Briggs Swope seventh. The drivers in five through seventh are a lap down. Four laps down in eighth is Alan Crowell. Ninth is Brian Preslar, six laps down. Tenth is Landon Lacey, 11 laps down. Excuse me, he's 31 laps now. So nine drivers pretty much on track in the single laps column. Justin Diltz in 11th. 11 drivers on, 
on the track. Out of the race, Steve Stripmatter, Stan Mayberry, Tom Para, Robbie Bice, Don DeGroot, Jimmy Barr, Alex Robinson. If you just join us, this man was leading the most laps. Won the first two stages, and then somewhere before 100 laps to go, I think it was like 115 to go or something. Landon Lacey spun out in turn four, got loose from underneath him, overcorrected it, and he was gone. No really big battles happening at the moment. The closest battle is second and third. Kayla McCarthy and Tyler Isley going at it there. So Susie in the lead after the Lacey situation. Could he be the one that wins it? So I got a message here that says, Mark's always set his cards up neutral to start or fairly comfortable to start, which hurts his long run almost every time. Some scenarios it hasn't hurt, but more times than not. That message coming in from former National Sim Racing League driver Johnny Taylor watching our broadcast. Under 40 laps to go, Josh Susi leads them here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And when we come back, we're taking you to the finish here at the last great Coliseum. We're back here with live coverage of the National Sim Racing League from Bristol. It's the Thunder Valley 300. Under 30 laps to go as you have a look at Kayla McCarthy. Back four seconds on Josh Susie. Only with one win this season coming at Auto Club Speedway. Take this opportunity to give a shout to all of our sponsors. Speed Demon TV, Setups and Graphics, Butt Kicker, Elevated Outdoors, and Affordable SEO and Marketing. Josh Susi currently leading under 30 laps away. He's already locked into the playoffs. Everyone in the in the yellow, they are in the round of 12. But this win would give him some more playoff points 
as we enter the round of 12, which would be a pretty good chance that he would clinch a spot in the round of eight, possibly maybe even after the first race. I'm not too sure. Don't count me on that. We'll just have to see how the point points look after this race. Free pass battle starting to develop here for fifth position. David Smeal and Dylan Clark. Watch this one closely if a yellow flag flies. Smeal without a front end, by the way, after getting his bumper shot off, chopped off. Got to be careful as well. I think one more four rocks, and then I think he has to do a drive, another drive through here. Just have to see with 25 laps to go. Bad exit for Dylan Clark. Got sideways there. Makes a nice save. Any more right foot, that car would have been going around and gone. Car behind him, by the way, is Landon Lacey in 10th position. That will be the spot he finishes this evening. I'm Tom Lacey. I'd say, you know what? I'm just putting it in the garage. I'm done for the evening. Heck, you know what? I'd say that if I were the drivers in 10th and 11th. Just let the top nine finish this race out strong. Why not? Gap is increasing a little bit to eight tenths of a second, but let's watch Dylan Clark here closely and ride on board. How much he's closing in. He's definitely a faster car for sure. Comparing the lap times here. smeal has been faster two of the last three laps. That time Smeal was slower though. Clark definitely driving it really hard, wanting that fifth position for sure. Look at that. Oh, Smeal got the wall, that's not good. Bad exit for David Smeal Jr. as Dylan Clark closes in with 20 to go. what can happen here. David Smeal Jr., by the way. Well, he is not in the playoffs, and we'll gather his stats up here. Twelfth start for Smeal this season. Best finish is second, which came at New Hampshire. A finish for him if he finishes in fifth. If he can hold off Dylan Clark, it would be his first top five since that New Hampshire race. Only one top five that came on January 12th. He finished sixth last week at Richmond. He's had two sixth place finishes outside of Richmond. Finished at Twin Ring Motegi. He just said something on the radio. And he scrapes the wall. Maybe he may be letting Dylan Clark by. I'm not too sure. Or if he says, I'm going to race you. Smeal, by the way, the highest driver on the track. Not in the playoffs after Lacey had its mishap. Clock just continues to count down every 15 seconds. So this race will be done in about 224 seconds from now, which is just about three and a half minutes. Quarter of a second lead. Remember, that this is a huge battle in case a yellow flag comes out. Don't mind me, Clark. I'm not going to interfere. That's Lacey on the radio saying, I'm not going to interfere, Clark. Go by. Remember, they're teammates. Here's the run. Clark inside. Now, here's the thing, though. And Smeal's in the wall. If a yellow comes out, one of these guys gets the free pass. They got to make a charge from the rear to the front. So then they kind of want another caution to come out at the same time. Eleven laps to go here at Bristol for Josh Susi with a two-second lead on Keelan McCarthy. Bad exit from Dylan Clark. And Smeal in the wall once again. These drivers are driving it so hard to the point where they'll have no cars by the end of this. Heck, we saw that in the Xfinity race at Bristol last time they were there. Again, free pass battle on the line for fifth. I wish we could say, write that down, but we can't. Nine laps to go. There's the 
run for Clark. Almost had it. Trying to dime in the corner. Let's see if he can get this to work. Down to the inside, he sends it. Smeal, does he scrape the wall? Not that time, but Clark could have it. Seven laps to go at Bristol. And for these guys, they will say it's eight, but actually there are seven laps left. Smeal fighting back everything he can, what looks like a modified 29. Clark touched the apron there, not what you want, so Smeal has it with six to go. Meanwhile, the lead is cut down for Kayla McCarthy, big time. Susie has lost some time. It is down to three tenths of a second. Five laps to go. Could Kayla McCarthy get some extra playoff points at Bristol? The KTS drivers are going to battle it out. Four laps to go. Can Susie survive and hold off Kayla McCarthy? Up on the high side, Kayla going low. Down to a two times. Three laps to go. Does Susie get win number seven? Or does McCarthy get win number two? Will the bump and run be in play by the teammates? Two laps to go. Identical lap times, I think. McCarthy that time was 300s faster. Pulls up to the door. Better exit from Susie. It's going to come down to one more lap. A half mile remains at Bristol Motor Speedway. Who's going to get it done? McCarthy trying with a run to the inside. She may have to send it in three and four. Better exit by Josh Susi. Is the bumper going to get used? And McCarthy sends it in. Does she get it to work? No. She loses it and Josh Susi survives at the Coliseum. McCarthy has wrecked it in turn one but comes out to finish second. I had the best view in the house for the last couple laps. <laughs> So Josh Susi with his seventh win of the season. I'm coming to do burnout too. I deserve it. <laughs> with the win, Susi ties Ashton Crowder for the most wins this season. I don't know how in the world Kayla was able to close in, but that was a dogfight. Congratulatory. To the end. And here we go. This is about to be a fun one. We're trying to get you to the right angle here. So your official results on your screen. And we'll stand by here as we'll talk with your top three. Start things off with Tyler Isley finishing in third place. Tyler, just uh, just walk yeah, us through your race. I mean, obviously, no one had anything for Landon Lacey or Josh Susie, but you come out with the podium. No, no, walk no, us through no, it. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I, I really think it's about you, time I got back up here. I've had a really long string of bad luck since Charlotte, so I'm just happy to happy to be here. Um, you know, we had a really fast car on the short run, and then it would go away in the middle. And as we as we'd go longer throughout the race, we would get faster, but I never really had anything for Kayla or Josh there at the end. I was just trying to hang on and, and hold on to this third place man. It sucks for Landon. He was fast. Um, yeah, just I really, really, really glad to be back at a, at a track that I, I really enjoy. Who do you want to give shout-outs to on your run tonight? Yeah, I want to thank uh, Rockin' K Bar B Ranch in uh, West Mansfield, Ohio uh, for the support, embroidery designs as well. Uh, made this 17 Buckeye Bullet Tribute Scheme really cool. Uh, the 1984 USAC Championship team that Dave Blaney drove for. Um, Love the car. It deserved a better outing than it had at Darlington. And uh, my uh, my buddy Preston at CDH Designs putting that together. Thank right. my family. And uh, it's now time for a, a nice, cold NOS energy drink to finish off the night. I don't blame you. We'll let you go and drink that NOS. Great job tonight. Thanks, buddy. So Tyler Isley finishing in the third position. And she's doing donuts, not donuts, but a burnout contest with Josh Susie. And I, I don't even know who survived. Susie survived it. But Kayla McCarthy finishing in second place. 
I gotta ask first off, though. Did Susie let you close in, or did he use up his tires? I think you could be the first one to explain. So... I know he didn't let me have it, because there was nothing said on the radio. I'm pretty sure I just... Just chased him down, and... and I told him there at the end, I said, if you were to give me the top, I think it would have been a lot closer. Um, he was able to roll the bottom a lot better than I was uh, throughout the race, and hell of a job to him, hell of a job to Patrick, um, Dylan, everybody at Nitro set up shop. I mean, just the the time that these guys put into us and, and working with us, it, man, to, to miss about that much, like, it sucks, but to go one-two with the, the team, it's, it's all right. What more did you need possibly give to Susie? I know you caught up to to him using the, the door uh, right on his door. Were you thinking about putting the Bristol bump and run? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It definitely crossed my mind going in too. I was like, all right, well, if I can't get him here, I'm gonna have to use the the Bristol bump and run going into three. And I thought we just about did. Um, I think I may have actually kind of spun myself there coming to the line to, to make sure that um, I didn't take us both out there. Um, at the end, but uh, no, by no means he didn't give it to me. We definitely made me earn it, so we'll take a P2. Good points tonight. We'll uh, start the next round digging. Who do you want to give shoutouts to on your run tonight? <sighs> Gotta give a shout out to my wife for uh, allowing me to put in the time to do this every week and um, whatnot. Uh, Patrick, Russ, Susie, Dylan, um, everybody over at NSRL, the Advent team, and um, all the guys, just, uh, thank you. Can, can't do this without them. All right, we'll let you go. Great job tonight. Thank you. Kayla McCarthy finishing in P2. Time to go to victory lane and talk with your race winner. As he does donuts, Josh Susi ties Ashton Crowder for the most wins this season. How does it feel to be winning at Bristol? <laughs> I love it, man. Uh... It was a really fun track, but you know, if it wasn't for uh, Landon poking himself there, I don't think we would have we would have had it. But hey, we're here and he's not. Talk about the final laps of that race. Uh, Kayla was chowing down on you there, and you went for the high side, which is pretty much, I think, the preferred line here at Bristol when it comes to that 30 degrees of banking. Yeah, it's just a good defensive line, and uh, you know, she did a real good job of. Uh, keeping her front tires under her and and then cooling them down for a charge at the end. And I was just kind of lollygagging up front, maintaining my gap and, uh, you know, no, trying not to get too close to the guys battling for Lucky Dog. I didn't want to get caught up in something. Next thing you know, I, I start looking at my relative and here she comes. And, uh, yeah, we at least made it exciting, right? Absolutely. Um, so this win now gives you five additional playoff points for winning the race. How do you feel now about the round of 12 with all those playoff points? And I don't want to say it, anything yet, but it seems like you could already clinch a round of eight spot after one race. Who knows? Yeah, uh, you know, take every playoff point you can get because uh, you don't know how it's going to shake out. Uh, we got some really close tracks coming up with uh, Vegas. It's probably going to be close proximity, and you know Talladega is going to be. And... Uh, who knows what's going to happen at the Roval, so I need all the bonus points I can get because uh, bad luck can strike at any time. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Yeah, uh, Nitro Setup Shop. Uh, as always, big shout-out to Patrick Rush uh, helping us work on these cars throughout the week and uh, putting in the time to, to spot for Dylan and to work with us on the setups, like I said. And, uh, you know, he takes a lot of his own personal time that he doesn't have to do to, to come over here and, try to help us be successful. So big shout out to him, everyone here on KTS. Uh, Kayla, amazing race there. And uh, Dylan was making a good recovery. Unfortunately got caught a couple laps down, but uh, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, all the technical alliances for Nitro, everyone in the league, of course, buddy, you as always, um, you know, I love uh, that we get to, we got to put on a good show for you. It looked like it might've been a snooze fest there to start. And uh you know, that's just Bristol. That's how she shakes up sometimes. It's Bristol, baby. Congrats on the win. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Josh Susi taking home his seventh win on the season, celebrating in victory lane. At this time, we give you your official results from tonight with only four cars finishing on the lead lap. 
Josh Susie followed by Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, Mark Sakosi. David Smeal was able to beat Dylan Clark somehow for the race win. So a nice job by him. And so all the drivers that are in yellow, they are in the playoffs in addition to Josh Aaron, who did not make the race tonight. So it'll be a fun round of 12. All the points will be updated on the National Sim Racing League website. And the points are updated. I hope Mark Sikosi gives you the update on our Facebook page at National Sim Racing League. So that will do it for our broadcast tonight. On behalf of all the drivers and the sponsors of the National Sim Racing League, including our admins, Josh Susi and Justin Diltz on behalf of Air Traffic Controller, that being Chris Lynn and Marty Sakala, signing off for tonight as we congratulate Josh Susi as he takes home his seventh win of the season. He wins the Thunder Valley 300. So long for Bristol, everyone.